Awol, Shalom, Rastafari. Let's touch on Kedis Din Maria. Now, we posted a couple of videos recently on the importance of the Black Madonna, on the importance of Kedis Din Maria, both as a, a symbol or a type, but also in connection with true Christianity, especially for us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. It's very important, first of all, to reorientate the proper imagery, the ancient imagery and the proper imagery of the Black Madonna or Kedis Din Gudmarium. Now, this book I'm holding, let me let you check this out right here, it's called the Isis Papers, the Keys to the Colors or the Keys of the Colors. And this book is by Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, a very, very important, important work right here concerning the the black seed, concerning melanin, concerning white supremacy, and the whole psychological paradigm of this particular time. And it helps as a good foundation. And this message is particularly um, directed and pre being prepared for the sisters for our sisters, for the mothers, for the daughters, and for the wives in order to restore that breach that slick willy lynchism has caused both between the male, the black male, and the female, the black female, and also the destruction of the black family. In order to really solve this, we have to go back more than 400 years. 500 plus years. We have to get to the very root of this and then get to the biblical truth of this because we have half the story, but it's really that other half of the story that we don't know or it's that other part of the story that's been suppressed purposefully. So we point out this book by the sister Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, a very, very important book called The Isis Papers. It really lays down the half of the story that's not told when we really want to know, well, how do we get here and how do we come out of this? So this particular document is very important and it's under African American Studies and Psychology because there's much psychology to this. So when ones, and ones might say, it doesn't matter what color, you know, Jesus is or doesn't matter what so-called color the Virgin Mary or the patriarchs and the people of the Bible are, they are not being honest. They're being either dishonest or willingly, willingly they, they're under a blindness because they're not recognizing the real world that we're living in, especially now in the end times, the end of the Gentile world powers as well as the end of the church age or more correctly the counterfeit church age that has suppressed this true image of Kedistin Gulmarium of our mother, therefore creating this paradigm, this psychological paradigm that's only getting worse as time goes on. We're witnessing, we're seeing things, we're seeing a, a degeneration of black, the black psyche, of the black consciousness, of the black males, of the black females. We wonder why we have so many broken families and homes, while we have so many challenges, and all of the so-called solutions that are proposed always ignore the biblical and the real black fact of the matter, that education is the key, not just the kind that takes place in their colleges and universities, but education in the home, educate each of the individuals in the home, especially the male and the female, has to be educated. And, th and this does not take a whole bunch of money or going to some special school, but it does take the willingness. The will is very important. So this is one book we wanted to just open up with this particular book as we begin on this series, which we call the, the Sisters, Daughters, Mothers, Wives series. We call it the Sisterhood series. Um, but it comes under the the title of the Black Virgin Mother or Kedistin Gudmaria. This is very, very important. So we want to continue. And in this week's sabbatical Torah portion reading and feeding, as you should be familiar with, is the number six, 
the sixth Sabbath since the Simchat Torah, and this is Tolodot or Tilid, Tilid. And here we have some of the notes from the last um, lecture, the last presentation on St. George. Also concerning over here, we have the Satan Bruiser, the Earth Blesser, the Ra, so the head of the family. And um, what we're going to do, what we intend to do right here, is put this up right here, clear por portion of this, because it's important for us to understand this is the historical, or in some senses, the mythological background of the matter. This is the historical, speaking about the Toledot, Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then we go further forward, and we come to the Davidic family, and we come to a particular period of time where it was very much similar for the Jewish, the black Jewish people in their particular time at the birth of our master and medicine of the Savior, Jesus Christos, or Yeshua, HaMoshiach, nearly 2,000 years ago, and what black people, especially the lost sheep, are going through in this present time. So it's very important, this particular study, and we're going to begin this off by trying to address some of the some of the lingering issues and questions. For example, speaking of the virginness of, of the virgin, in the words, was Christian Gulmarium, was Mary a virgin? And this question has often been asked and is still asked. And here's what's very impor important about this particular matter. According to scriptures, first of all, what does virgin mean? Let us touch on what is the meaning of virgin. Let's clear this right here and get a little bit of room over here. We'll leave some of this up here. Clear this. All right. Now let's touch on the meaning of virgin and the importance of virgin. Now, the word virgin is this is a question was was Mary a quote virgin. Now, understanding the context of who we are speaking about, you understand we're speaking about our mother, Kiddistin Gudamardin, the mother of our Savior, of Jesus Christos, of Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior, of Yehoshua HaMoshia. And the question is being asked, was she a virgin? Now, if we study Christianity and the church ages, this question was debated and caused much dissension among different early Christians of whether there was a perpetual virginity, you understand, to Kedistin Maria. Was she a virgin at the time? Was she a virgin afterward? So let's touch on what, first of all, virgin means. We have the Hebrew from the Hebraics. We have Alma, right? We have the Hebrew word Alma. Now, Alma means a young woman. Alma means a maiden. So, she was a young woman. She was a maiden. Now, the context of the word Alma both means a woman who is of marriageable age or a woman who has had sex or one who has not had sex. Usually, it's a woman of marriageable age, so now she's ready to consummate that more mature level of relationship and responsibility. So Alma does not mean virgin in the mythological sense, in the mythological sense like this is the Hebrew. So Alma is, let's put right here, H-E-B is the Hebrew. Now we have the Greek, Partheno, or some say Parthenos, just like the Parthenon, the Parthenon, the, the Greek uh, temple to to the goddess or to to Isis or some say to Diana and some of the um, Greco-Roman types, but from the Greek, it's Parthenos. And Parthenos is where we get the English form of virgin. So when the Bible was translated in the European, according to the European line of descent, the, the Western, we could say Western Christianity, this word that we find... Um, in the scriptures as virgin, and for example, there's two main 
um, references, actually three, but in two different books, there's Mateus Wengel, which is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 23, and there is Yelukas Wengel, which is Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 27, then again in chapter 2, verse 36, where virgin is found. This word virgin is found. Now, Bamarinya, in the Amharic, we say Dinga, Dinga, and we can write it like this, Dinga. Now, Dinga, very interestingly enough, which is, this is the Greek right here, um, we'll put Greek right here, and this is the Ethiopic right here. All right, so this is the Greek uh, Parthenos, this is the Hebrew Alma, and this is the Ethiopic. Now, this meaning corresponds most closely to Alma. In other words, the Ethiopic corresponds more to the more to its fellow Afro-Shemitic language because Hebrew is an Afro. Shemitic language. You can go look that up and it's, it's filed and listed quite correctly as an Afro-Shemitic language. Well, so is Gutas, the Ethiopic, and by extension, the Amharic, the Afro-Shemitic languages. So the meaning, though the word may seem on the outset to be different, Dingil, from the Ethiopic and the Amharic and Alma, the meaning referring to a young woman a young woman of marriageable age, one who may have had relationship or knowledge of a man or sexual intercourse, or one who might not have had. So the meaning was not on this so-called mythological term, especially from the Indo-European languages, when we now connect Parthenos, the Greek, from which was translated in the English as virgin. So now what is important to understand when we ask the question or when the question is asked of us was this Dengelmaria, was she a virgin? Well, the scriptures say so, and we ask, well, was your mother? Was your mother a virgin? Now, some people would get very offended. They would say, hey, leave my mother out of it. Well, we should also leave our Lord and Savior's mother out of it in that sense because we live in a very disrespectful, a dishonorable age, especially coming to the end of uh, the Gentile world dominion or the end of what people know as the world system. We live in a very dishonorable age. So this question of the virginity of Kedistan Glamarium, either it's on ignorance, for example, not understanding what the word in translation was translated from, Parthenos, which has to do with Greek um, mythology, has to do with Greek um, ideas, Greek intellectualism ideas, which in some ways was good, but was not able to express the fullness of the Afro-Shemitic language such as Hebrew, the Afro-Shemitic concepts that were embodied in the idea of the word Alma, that gets to be translated as virgin from the Greek more so, from the Greek idea of Parthenos. So there was a great focus and a fixation on this idea of virginity, which people confuse with what the Bible was saying. Now, we know that Christine Glamarium, she was both a virgin in mind as well as a virgin within body. We understand this from Luke's Gospel, but more particularly from Yelukas Wengel, or Luke's Gospel, because in Luke's Gospel, Virgin Mary says in chapter 1, she says, um, how shall this happen? How shall I get pregnant and conceive and bear a child and bear a son, a man-child, seeing I do not know, I have not known a man, I, I have not known sexual intercourse, I'm, I'm not on that at that grade yet, basically, is what she was saying. And so she's saying that she's a virgin in the sense of not have, having sexual intercourse previously. And she's a virgin by not having the knowledge of it, nor the physical action of this. Now, here's the next level. There's another level to the virginity. 
that brings us closer to the idea of the blackness and the divinity of the blackness, not just in the outer skin complexion, but the outer complexion and her skin being reflection of an inner purity as well. As they say, Lord of the perfect black. Well, this didn't go to Mariam. She was mother of that Lord of the perfect black, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Yehoshua Ha Moshiach. Now, some people would ask, well, this idea of perpetually being a virgin, how was she perpetually? She must have had sex. You know, there's a great curiosity that borders on somewhat, you know, reverential disrespect because just ask yourself, um, why does it matter, like, who she had sex with so forth and so on after Jesus Christos? Jesus Christos bearing him was the whole point. That was the whole fulfillment of the ancient type and of the prototype. So that question about whether she was a virgin afterward or she, she must have had sex before, and it, it comes from the dishonor more of the original type, the blackness, than anything else, than any curiosity. Plus the curiosity is, is, is vain. It's really vain. I often like to use this um, comparison of it. If someone asks about your own mother, if your mother was a virgin when she bore you, or she was a virgin before she got pregnant with you, whether she's a virgin later on and people probing into whether she was a virgin or not a virgin, it, it, you're missing the point of the story. You're missing the point of the example. You see, and this is why we say that the virgin mother, Kedistin Gudamariam, is a very important missing link and key, especially as we speak on black liberation and as we look at healing the present condition of the black male, the black female, the black child, and the black family. You see, because all of the divine types, all of the good types, the righteous types, which are our own types, have been taken from us and have been misappropriated by the Gentiles, by others. And when we now seek to reclaim them, people try to make it seem as though we are so-called racist. We're not racist to say that the Virgin Mary was the black Madonna, was the black mother. History proves this. The fact proves it. The fact that of us, we prove this to be so. So we're going to continue on, on some more aspects of this, but just that point on was Mary a virgin and this whole idea of her perpetual virginity in the sense that she bore the eternal Savior, then she in that and according to that type is perpetually who she is ones that do not have any evidence to the contrary besides, well, was these children later on the brothers of Jesus Christos? Were they children of Mary or was, you know, his mother or were they children of Joseph from another relationship? That is still missing the whole point of the story, of the type, of the prototype. So my brothers and sisters, we're going to hope to touch on this a little bit more and go into some other related matters and details about this. But suffice it to say, Mary, according to the scriptures, this didn't go to Maria, she was a virgin before she bore Jesus Christos. And according to the principles of the story, even the mystery revealed, so she is. And to go at it another way or for ones to try to probe and say, no, it wasn't, it couldn't have happened by the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, conceiving in Mary without male seed, even that right there is, is going against the, the omnipotence of the Almighty. If, if, you, if you recognize, there's still things about science that people do not understand. There's still new discoveries that's overturning a lot of ancient and mostly Eurocentric theories and ideas about what's what, what is what is. Concerning our black Madonna, our black mother, it is 
what it is. And sisters, please check into this and try to get a copy of the ISIS papers as well as a couple other resources. They're very, very important in order to restore the divinity to the black woman, which is to restore it to the black child, and therefore which is to restore the black family. This is why Kedistin Gudamariam, our black mother, is so important, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshiach. So stay tuned. More to come. Shalom. Rastafari.